Now I'm excited to bring the word of God to you this morning. During this lockdown, lockdown, we sit at home. We're not allowed to cross the borders. Now at least we can cross the borders so my wife and I can go on holiday. <laughs> but I said, Lord, what must I do? And I was thinking of the one thing. When God looked down on this earth, He was always looking for a people that is precious to Him, a chosen people that will fulfill His plan and purpose on the earth so that when the other people or the other nations will see the blessings of God on His chosen people, that they will become jealous and say, how is it possible? And they will introduce them to the living God and they will come and give their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. You believe that? So I took my Bible and I really started to study that God's chosen people. And I saw that God called Abraham and Abraham had a son, Isaac. And Isaac had a son, Jacob. And Jacob's name was changed to Israel. And because there was a famine, they went over to Egypt and they received the best land in Egypt because of Joseph. But after 400 years and after the pharaohs that knew what God did for them and Joseph died, and God's hand was upon Israel more than and on the Egyptians. That means that, the, that, that Israel increased in numbers more than the Egyptians. It also means that all the, 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 the knowledge was with Israel. They knew how to build buildings. They knew how to do the infrastructure, the waterways, the plantings of the seeds. And they were prosperous so much so that the king of Egypt said, what must we do? They are going to take over our land. So let's put them in captivity. Let's put some pressure on them. Until, until they started to call on the name of the Lord and the Lord heard them and the Lord sent Moses and they brought them out with a mighty hand. And with all the miracles that they have seen, they should still stay a blessed nation because the faith should have risen up inside of them because of all the miracles that God did, the plagues, the open up of the Red Sea, the water out of the rock, the manna that comes from heaven, the clothes that not wear out. What a miracle! Yet, they could not trust God after they were 40 years in the wilderness to enter in Well, the first one. But the sons, they trusted God and they said, we believe God can do it. Those people that have seen the miracle power of God says, the land is full of, of giants, Canaanite, the uh, Anaks are there. What must we do? We can't go. And they were crying. But the sons, fathers again, I mentioned it earlier this morning as well. Sons look to their fathers. And when their fathers are doing the wrong thing, they do even the wrong thing better. But if their fathers are doing the right things, they will even do better things than their fathers. So then they came the land of promise. Joshua brought them in. Beautiful land. Full of milk and honey. And they trusted God. But when Joshua died, they started to take the gods of the country that was in that country back. And they said, this is the God that will deliver us from Egypt. And they started worshipping those gods. It has no hands, that has no feet, 
that has no mouth, has no eyes, has no ears, can't do, can't do anything, can't bless them. So I studied this in the book of Samuel, in the book of Kings, in the book of Chronicles, and I went further to the Psalms. I went further to Isaiah, and then I came to Jeremiah. And when I started to to to, to, uh, to, to learn from Jeremiah and to see what Jeremiah did. I was very concerned and I cried to God. Let me take you to Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 1. Jeremiah, he says, the word of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, of the priest. So Jeremiah was the son of the priest who were in Anahot in the land of Benjamin, that's about four kilometers from Jerusalem. He was not in Jerusalem, he was close to Jerusalem. To whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Josiah. Josiah was the king of Judah. We must remember that this is the time already that the ten tribes, the Israel was divided into ten tribes and two tribes of Judah. Israel was with Samaria, and they did not serve God. There was 19 kings that ruled over Israel, and more of them did not serve God. Only a few turned back to God, burnt all the false altars and the false images, and said, no, God is our God. But after 19 kings, Assyria came and took them into captivity, and Israel, the ten tribes, is God. So now it is just Judah, and Josiah, he is the 16th king, and he did not follow his father's advice because his father was, did not serve God at all, and his grandfather did not serve God. Let's see. To whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon. Ammon was a king, that was his father, for two years. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord, and, the, uh, and in the thirteenth year of his reign. And he came also in the days of Jehoiakim. Jehoiakim is the son of Josiah. He did wicked in, his, in the sight of the Lord. And then he died after eleven years. And then Zedekiah became the king. And he also was ruling for eleven years. And he also did evil in the sight of the Lord. And then it says, until the carrying away of Jerusalem captive in the fifth month. That is the Babylonian captivity, when God could not take it any longer. And he says, let Babylon come and take them in captivity for 70 years. Do you remember that story? Jeremiah was a prophet for 40 years until that happened when they went into captivity. And he was not taken in captivity. He stayed because he was just outside of Jerusalem. And he continued to prophesy to those few that were left and also those that ran away into Egypt. He went also out to Egypt and prophesied for another six years. So Jeremiah was a prophet for 46 years. 40 years till they went into captivity. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, listen very carefully, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. I want you to know God knew you even before you were in the womb. God has a plan for you. Before you were born, I sanctified you, and I ordained you to be a prophet to the nations. Now this man is a young man, and he says, how is it possible, Lord? I'm a young man, I can't speak well. Look what he said to the Lord in verse 6. Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a youth. Young people in this church, listen to me very carefully. Don't let your young years hold you in captivity. Let it go, believe in God. He says, I can't speak. God can touch your mouth and you will be able to speak. He said, do not say I am a youth. 
let the power of the past be broken in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. For you shall go to all to whom I sent you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces. Huh. That means they will look at you. He says, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. What does it mean that God says he will deliver you? It means they will even put him in prison. They will take him. God wants him already at that day. He says, it's not an easy way. It's a difficult time. But I will be with you. Whenever you go into prison, I will release you. Then the Lord put forth his hand and he touched my mouth. May God touch our mouth, everyone that is here today. Because many times we don't know what to say. So that when he touches our mouth, we will know and we will speak what God gives us. Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have set this day over you nations and over kingdoms. I have set you over them. But now listen to this further. To root out, that's negative. To pull down, that's negative. To destroy and to throw down, that's negative. Four things that he needs to do before he can build and he can plant. In other words, what needs to happen today is that when God wants to move upon this earth, he will have to destroy all the bad things in this world so that we can build and we can plant. Now listen to me, you can't plant if you don't prepare your field. You can't just plant anywhere if there is weeds and grass and whatever. You have to plow the ground. You have to prepare the ground. Then you can plant. You can't build if you want to build on a piece of property. You still have to level the place out and dig a foundation. If you don't do that, you can't build. Now, if we want to build, if we want to plant, we must first do the four things. Root out, pull down, destroy, and throw down. I felt very sensitive when I was reading and studying this. But Jeremiah had to go through a very difficult time. God says, you go and you bring the word of the Lord, but they will not listen to you and they will put you in person, but I will be with you. God says, it doesn't matter how they look at you or what they want to do against you. I will send you and I will touch your mouth. I will touch your mouth and you will speak whatever needs to be spoken. When my wife and I, we bought the property in the first church and we applied for ecclesiastical rights, church rights. They came and they say, no, you can't have it. You can't have it on that eight acres property. But in the night time, for a year and a half, God woke me up every three o'clock in the morning and I prayed that we will have success for what God spoke to me because God showed that property, God supplied, and God gave me that property for the purpose of building a church. Now the government or the municipality comes and says, you can't do it. I did not believe what they said, I believe what God said. So I applied the second time and they still said no. I went to the government and I applied at the government and they said no. And I did it the second time and the government that's now already a year, more than a year gone. And I said, Lord, what must I do? So I went to the chairman of, of the municipality and I said, I want to be a board member. I can't become a board member on this board. This is why. He said, because there's things that God said I must do and you people stop me to do that. I've got to do it. Then there was a big board meeting with all the municipal officials. And they called me. They said, come. And I came. And the chairman stood up and he said, what you want to do is impossible. And here's the whole box the board. You can't do what you want to do. 
but we give you time to say something, but it won't help you. We're sorry that you have already ordered the structure of the church, and if you want to build it, if you want to do a good thing, but this is what you want to do, you can't do. I was flabbergasted. I did not know what to do, what to say. But when they said you can stand up and say something, I stood up, and when I stood up, the Holy Spirit came over me. And I was listening to what I was saying. Never prepared that speech. I said, I'm doing this not for you. I'm doing it for God. I'm doing it for our nation, our city. And God has said, I must do it. And I want the permission, not only later on. I want it today, tomorrow. I want to start digging foundation. And I thought, where do you get that from? <laughs> and then they looked at one another. And the first one shook his head, yes. And the second one shook his head. This is the things, church, that will come. And they gave me permission to do it because I spoke the words that were spoken out of my mouth by the Holy Spirit. And who am I? Just a little bit. But the God and the Spirit that is in me, He is God. Hallelujah. So Jeremiah's sermons and prophecies, he fulfilled declaring that to surrender to God's will is the only way to escape calamity. Let me just give you another portion because he wrote 10 sermons. And this is the first sermon in chapter 2. Chapter 2, the word of the Lord came. Let's go to verse 5. God speaks to Jeremiah. What injustice have your fathers found in me? You know, God is a holy God. There's no injustice in him. But now God asked Jeremiah, What injustice have your fathers found in me? That they have gone far from me and followed idols and have become idolatrous. Neither did they say, where is the Lord who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, who led us through the wilderness, through the land of deserts and pits, through the land of droughts and of shadows of death, through the land that no one crossed and where no one dwelt. I brought you into a beautiful country to eat its fruit and all its goodness. But when you entered, you defiled my land made my heritage an abomination. The priest did not say, where is the Lord? And those who handled the law did not know me. You know, those that handled the law, many times the Pharisees handled the law. And they were just checking if you were doing what the law says. If you will steal, that will stole you. If, 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 if you do anything according to the law that's wrong, they are your, your judge. But they did not even know God. The rulers also transgressed against me. The prophets prophesied by Baal and walked after things that do not profit. Let me skip to verse 13. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters. The fountain of living waters is the pure water that comes from it. Much of our water in South Africa is not pure enough to drink. In my young days it was. You could drink anyway. Not anymore. They hewn themselves systems, broken systems, that can hold no water. Oh Lord. Let us be holy to you and let us listen to you. So what happened to Jeremiah? He was threatened in his hometown by the priest. Not the government, the priests. Because he prophesied certain things that they didn't like. And he was also threatened by the prophets in Jerusalem who publicly humiliated him as false. And you know what they did to him? They threw him in a system. 
You know what is the system? Where all the toilets rubbish are coming into a pit. He threw him in there. This poor man. You know when I went through the book of Jeremiah, I got so heart sore for this man. And I was praying. I said, Lord, please bless Jeremiah. But then I thought Jeremiah lived a long time ago, two and a half thousand years ago. Now what? I, mean, I can't pray for him. But then when I went on into the book and I read all the things that the God's people did. Remember, the ten tribes were already in, in captivity. Assyrian stood them. But now God says to Jeremiah, you know Judah does more evil than even the ten tribes. I said, Lord, I pray for your people. I pray for Judah. Then I thought, wait a minute, you can't pray for Judah. That's a long time ago. And then, as I went further, I said, Lord, look what is happening. He prophesied God's judgment and his coming Babylonian invasion. And it, the other prophet didn't like that. And then prophesied something against it. But Jeremiah receives the word from God. So he had a life of comfort. He was put in stocks. He was forced to flee from Jehoiakim, that is the son of Josiah. He had, was in good standing with the Josiah because he was a good king and did not evil in the sight of the Lord. He did righteousness. But when his son became king, he was a wicked king and he brought back all the altars and, and Baal worship. He also wrote a scroll with all the things that God has prophetically spoken. But when the king Jehoiakim got hold of it, he destroyed it. Then the Bible says he wrote a new scroll, more complete edition, and gave it to Bert Barak, that was a friend of him. And he was hiding this scroll. And later on, when they came out of captivity, it was found in the temple. You know what? God came to him in chapter 16, verse 2, and he says, you must not take a wife for yourself because your life will be too difficult to get married and have children. Although Jeremiah lists the moral and the spiritual uh, causes for the coming catastrophe, he also proclaimed God's gracious promise of hope and restoration. I want you to know that God is a holy God. And God is a merciful God. And God will delay judgment when you come to Him if the people will only come and listen to the Word of God. If the people will only come and repent and change their ways. God is always ready to do that. But God's warning is also clear. Judah's time for repentance will soon run out. Because there is a time of no return. God really wants His people to turn back to Him. And I thought the chosen people in the Old Testament is the people of Israel. But who is the chosen people today in the New Testament? The Lord God said, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. What is the church? That's the believers. What do we receive in the church? Instruction, how to look, what to do, how to worship Him, how to pray, and to follow His ways. I believe we are going to see miracles after miracles as this pandemic is over. God is going to do great things because there is a disaster in the world and people will cry out to God and God will help them. I want you to expect great miracles because He's a miracle with God. And as I was so concerned about Judah, and I was so concerned about Jeremiah, and I prayed, and I said, God, could that, could that not be different? But then it changed over to God, because now I feel sorry for God. 
So I pray to God, please forgive what Judah did and what Israel did and what all the people did. Lord, it must be very difficult for you. I thank you for your blessing, Lord. I thank you that your hand is upon us. That night I fell asleep. And in the middle of the night, God woke me up. And God spoke to me. He said this to me. What must I do? I said, Lord, when I woke up and heard this voice, what must I do? I said, Lord, you never ask anybody for the future, and this was not a question that he asked me what to do because of he doesn't know where to go. God knows the beginning from the end. God knows everything. But God is a God that's a father that needs to discipline and correct his children. And as he corrected Israel, and as he now is busy to correct Judah, God said to me, what else do I do? In other words, if God's people are not serving God, what can Oh Lord God, I was shaken. I said, Lord God, I pray, Lord God, for the church that you have raised up in this place, that this will be a place of miracles, that this will be a place of the power of God, that this will be a place where people know that they can receive forgiveness if they surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ, that this is a place that stands in a covenant relationship with God. And if your eyes are going to and fro all over the world, this church is a church that you can use for your kingdom and for your glory. And this is the church that you can speak the words that needs to come like it came in Jeremiah. He still has his prophets today. That God will raise up some of you as prophets. That God will raise up apostles. That God will raise up evangelists again. I said, Lord God, we bought this property from an evangelist, Reynard Bonke. He passed away. He's with God. But Lord, the prayers that he prayed on this property, I pray that you will hear it again and let it come to pass even in our days, in the days of the church fountain of life, in Jesus' name. God's chosen nation that turned his back on him, they made other gods of wood, of clay, of stone, of silver and gold. Gods that cannot hear, cannot see, cannot walk, cannot bless them. You know that Bible students studied this book of Jeremiah and they found 164 references in the Bible that warned that God warns his people that judgment is on its way if you don't repent. And let me tell you something, that judgment would not have come if they repented. Well, we have difficult times in the world today, and I believe God's word is speaking to all, all of us. Repent. I believe there is many people that were just doing their own thing and didn't care about anything, but now they are crying out, where is God? Why, why is God doing this to us? I want you to know it's not God is doing it to you. It's your sin that does it. I remember when I was still young and in the business and the customer came in and I sold him some tires and he put the car on the lift and they were busy taking the tires off and he came to me and he spoke to me and he said, hey, it is very dry. I said, yes, it is very dry. We need rain. I said, it's time that we get together and pray to God and ask him for rain. He said to me, what? You want to say that God is withholding the rain? What kind of a God is that? We want the God that gives blessings. And that is most of the time 
You know, he threw me totally off my feet. I didn't know what to say. If that is the God, I don't want to serve him. In other words, in the mind of people, God is a God that needs to bless. He can't discipline. He can't correct. He can only bless. When we are in need, we can come to God and we can ask God for the blessing. But when everything is well, okay, God, you stay where you are. We will serve whatever we will serve. We will do whatever we want to do. That's the word that God gave me and said, what must I do even today? Let me tell you something. God is asking the church, what must I do? do. Can I just continue on this or what must I do? People want a God that won't correct them but only bless them. They want prophets that only prophesy good things and not bad things. And today now that we live in a time, difficult time, the Bible is taken out of parliament, the Bible is taken out of the schools, if you discipline your children, you can go to prison. They will correct you. You may not even discipline your own children. It's prohibited. Corruption, bribery, killings, rape. Even now there's a Satan church in Cape Town. Abortion, drugs, porn, many other things. Then I want to ask the question for you. Do you, do you blame God? If God starts to act. What must God do in our days? Jeremiah was a prophet that prophesied faithfully for 47 years, proclaiming God's message to a stiff-necked people of Judah. For 22 years, while Judah was threatened by Assyria and Egypt, but that changed later, that Babylon came to threaten them and in the latter 19 days he proclaimed God's judgment while Judah was threatening and besieged by Babylonia till they went into captivity to Babylon who destroyed Jerusalem, the temple and the walls and all the houses, everything was destroyed. Why? Because God's people turned the back on God. That's why I'm very happy with you. Even in this difficult time you are coming to the house of God. Coming to hear what God is saying. I believe that we're living in a time where God is going to speak much more and you will hear clear words from God. For a long time, I've never heard the voice of God. Suddenly, two and a half weeks ago, I heard the voice of God. And I felt bad. God, what must you do? Jeremiah was not taken and stayed to prophesy in those days. He did not, he was not taken into Babylon. He still continued to the little small of remnant that was still in the, in the area of Jerusalem and also to the people that went to Egypt. Now listen to me. God's chosen people today is the church. You and I, we together, we are God's chosen people. Do you believe that? Yes. If we are God's chosen people, and God wants to build His church with those people because it's not the building, it's the people. And whatever the government wants to do, they want to close the churches because they are hoping for communism where there's only a group in the top that will rule and the rest is all the same and nobody. We cannot allow that to come. This is an attack of the devil worldwide, not only South Africa. It's time that we pray that the churches will open because churches are the voice in this time. And I believe that God is going to raise up prophetic words in our nation and even in our church that will hear the voice of God and will give us direction and we will set the church free in Jesus' name. Today everything is in the grip of COVID-19. 
and all the consequences of the of this epidemic. Economies die, people lose their work, there's no money. And now some come and say, but why did God allow this? Did God do it? Jesus came and he says, I have come to give you life and to give you more life more abundantly. But Satan comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. What is happening in the world today? Killings, destruction. We are destroyed. It's the work of the devil. But let me tell you something. His time is short. Yes. The church is going to rise up. Yes. You and I, we are the church. He cannot touch us because we will be protected by God. As God said to Jeremiah, Jeremiah, they will come against you, but whenever they take you, I will come and deliver you. God says, I will deliver you. Hallelujah. But you know what happens? When we see that the sons of God in the Old Testament time in the book of Job, came to present themselves in the presence of God in heaven. Then God, Satan was also in the midst, and God said to him, Satan, where do you come from? So now I'm roaming to and fro all over the world, trying to get the place, but I can't get the place. He says, okay, have you seen my servant Job? Righteous man, blameless in my sight. Yeah, I have seen him. I tried to attack him, but I could not attack him because there's a hedge of protection around him. And all, you have blessed him with so much blessings. Of course he will serve you because of the blessings. So what happened? God says, okay, I will take my hedge of protection away. Don't touch his life. And Satan came with his destructive work and he took everything away from him. Nothing was left. He did not curse God. He did not curse God. Now God is not doing that with you and me. God has a hedge of protection around us. God has angels that are walking with us. Angels that protect us. Many times something negative can happen, but the angels of God are there. You don't even see them. You don't even know them, but they protect you. But if you walk out of that protection, whose fault is that? God's fault? No, it's your fault. So whenever you walk out of the protection of God, the enemy has a chance to hit you. And he will come and he will do that because he hates every person because we are receiving what he had before he sinned. That's why worship is so important. That's why speaking in tongues is so important. Don't be afraid if we start speaking in tongues. This is a new thing that we're doing. Putting some prayer points on, on the screen. And we are praying and, and I invite you to come 15 minutes before the time because 15 minutes before we start we are praying and we put the prayer points on the screen so that we you can know what are the prayer points and we pray for that and then we pray in tongues because when you pray in tongues your spirit prays and your spirit knows much better what you pray tongues is very important but tongues was when most churches stopped but we don't stop, stop tongues. We believe in tongue speaking. So God will protect you and He will help you. He will provide for you. He will do everything for you if you can believe in Him. Now let me close with chapter 18. But there's a lot of things in the book of Jeremiah that I can speak to you, but it's a, it, it, it is bad. But here. In chapter 18 and verse 1, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah from uh, the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise, 
and go down to the potter's house, and then I will cause you to hear my word. Now I am inviting you all. Let us go in our mindset to the potter's house, okay? What is the potter's house? Maybe a workshop with a table, a round table that turns, and on the table is wet clay. And the potter will take his hands and put it on the wet clay, and he forms a vessel out of it. Okay? Remember that. Now look, look what is happening. Then I went down to the potter's house, and there he was, making something out of the wheel. And the vessel that he made of clay was mad, in other words, crushed in the hands of the potter. In other words, he was sitting by the wheel, and the wheel was turning, and he was shaping a vase, and he didn't like it, and he crushed everything, and then he started all over. Is that not what happened to the choice of people in the Old Testament, and now God is start, starting over with the New Testament, which is his church. And that is not the seed of Abraham, it's the seed of the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, everyone that has accepted the Lord Jesus Christ has born again by the seed of Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter what continent, it doesn't matter what color, it doesn't matter who you are, rich or poor, if you are born again, you become the chosen people of God in the New Testament, which is the church. Then he said, the word of the Lord came to me, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter, says the Lord? Look, as the clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hands, O house of Israel. And so is the church of Jesus Christ in the hands of God. The instant I speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom, to pluck up, to pull down, and to destroy it, that was the way that, that Jeremiah was called, to root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down. He says, to pluck up, to pull down, and destroy it, if that nation against whom I have spoken turns from its evil, if they turn from its evil, I will relent of the disaster. So God is able to take it away. God is able to take this epidemic out of the world. If my people will pray and repent. Verse 9. And the instant I speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to build and to plant it, yet it comes again. That's what God will do. He will take the past. If it's still wet, he can crush it and he can rebuild it. But if you put it in the sun afterwards and it dries out, it's hard. You can't do anything with it. If you misuse it, you can break it and it's just pieces. But when the clay is still wet, Thank you, Lord, that the clay of the church of Jesus Christ is still wet in the hands of God. That it's still possible for the Lord to form a new font, a new, a new vessel out of it. To build it and to plant it, then he can do that work. If he does evil in my sight, so that he does not obey my voice, then I will relent concerning the good which, with which I said I would benefit. In other words, I will not do good things to you. Thank God for His blessings. Thank God that we worship Him. Thank God that we are following Him. Thank God that we are reading the Word of God. Thank God that He is our God. He is our Master. He is everything in our lives. God surely bless you. In Jesus' name. Now therefore speak to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, Thus says the Lord, Behold, I am fashioning a disaster and devising a plan against you. Return now everyone from his evil way and make your ways and your doings good. Now look at the next verse, verse 12. And they said, That is hopeless. We will walk according to our own plans and we will have one 
and, and, and we will, everyone, do the imaginations of his evil heart. In other words, give us not. Therefore the Lord says in verse 15, Because my people have forgotten me, they have burned incense to worthless idols. They have caused themselves to stumble in their ways from the ancient paths, to walk in paths and not in a highway, to make the land desolate and a perpetual hissing. Everyone who passes by it will be astonished and shake his head. I will scatter them as with an east wind before the enemy, and I will show them the back and not the face in the day of their calamity. My time is up. Lord, we come this morning as people of Alpha of Life, and we come and we pray. We need you. Forgive any rebellious in us. We seek in your face. We don't want to be like Israel or Judah that was your chosen people. We want to be the chosen people, which is the church. And we look to you. Sustain us. I pray now in Jesus' name that if there is a need in this body, Lord, that you will fulfill it by a miracle. Like you did with a woman that only had a little bit of wind. Even the woman that came with two pennies, practically no money, but that's all what she had, and she gave it to Jesus, and Jesus acknowledged it. She has given everything. I pray, Father, that we will know the purpose of the future. That we will know what is happening in the church today all over the world. That you will raise up your man and woman that are faithful, like we see in some of the kings who are faithful to God. God bless them. Lord, the one time when the enemy came and that king was worshiping you, and this king went into the temple and says, Lord, look, the multitude is coming against us. We are not strong enough to do anything. 185,000 people died when God sent one angel and he destroyed them. And the rest went back to the land. And when the king came into the temple of, of Baal, his own sons came and killed him in the temple. Because 185,000 people were killed in one span by an angel of God. So you can move in our days. And our faith is upon you. It's a time, Lord God, that we have to change our hearts. Our faith must really go back to God. We really want to see you. We really want to feel you. We really want to hear your voice. And we really want to walk in obedience so that everything that the enemy has coming against us, we are surrounded in that, in, in, in that protection realm. We will not walk out of the protection realm, Lord, so that the devil can come and get hold of us. I pray now for your blessing upon each and every one. Let your hands stay upon them. Speak to them even in the middle of the night so that we can know what the plan, purposes of God is, what we need to do. God knows everything. We surrender to you, Lord. Here we are. Out of the life church, here we are, Lord God, this is your church. Use it for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen.